If you're a blogger or you're looking to start a blog, it's super important to get the most leverage, the most traction out of every single blog post you create. After all, you're investing time and money to create that awesome content and we don't want it to go to waste. But here's the thing about blogs. Not everyone likes to read. Wah, wah. I know, hard to believe. Not everybody likes to consume content in its text form. So what's a blogger to do? Bloggers need to turn those awesome posts into different forms of content that can be consumed in different ways through a process called repurposing. And good news, because today we're diving into three. Count them, one, two, three. Super simple ways that you can repurpose your favorite blog posts in less than 15 minutes using a tool that probably doesn't stray far from your side. Are you ready to dive in? Welcome to this live recording of episode 287 of the Amplify Your Awesome podcast. I'm your host, Yang Pratt, also known as Dr. Content because I help super smart business owners diagnose what ails their content. Whether you're brand new on this content creation journey or you're looking for a way to get the most leverage from every single piece of content you create, you, my friends, are in the right place. If you're joining me live, say hey and let me know whether or not you have a blog. And if you're listening over on the podcast, I want to know if you have a blog too. Share the link with me over on today's show notes at youngpratt.com slash 287. And if you are joining me live, and you have questions, just pop them below. I see that Krista is here. Hello, Krista, I'm so excited. I looked at your beautiful blog post and I have some tips that you can use today to repurpose your awesome blog. So when it comes to repurposing your blog post, it really doesn't have to be hard or time consuming or complicated. I know it sometimes can feel like that because you might see people who are everywhere. They have the blog, they have all the social media, they have the podcast, they have the video. And when I first came into this online space, I felt compelled to do it all as well. So all I was doing all the time was creating content after content after content and at first they were blog posts and then they were podcasts and now they're videos which become all those other things but I never got to get off that crazy content creation hamster wheel so today fast forward a couple years and I'm a huge believer in really starting as simply as possible systematizing things so that you can make things repeatable and you can outsource things more quickly and of course starting with the things and the tools you already have and that includes your blog posts the blog posts you already have are going to be key to helping you repurpose for maximum gain now on monday i put a post here on Facebook requesting bloggers to share their favorite posts with me. And I have some blogger friends who are, you know, have been blogging for several years and they said, you know, I don't know that I can pick one. I have hundreds, literally. I'm just not sure what to, where to start with that. So for those of you that did share your blogs, Krista, thank you for sharing. I know Lucy shared two blog posts with me and I took a look at Susan's blog as well. And I'm gonna share today three super simple tips because I'm all about super simple because the faster we can get things done and the easier we can get them done, the more likely it is we're going to do that. So are you ready for tip number one to repurpose your blog posts? You're going to extract text. What? Didn't you just say that people don't always read blog posts? Why would I want to extract text? Here's the thing, blog posts in their entirety are something usually called long form content. It's pretty long, it's very detailed, it takes people some time to get through it. However, in places like social media land, 
not everybody wants to stop their scroll and spend a lot of time digging into long form content. So by extracting text, little bite-sized nuggets, they could be tips, they could be quotes, they could be takeaways, they could be the headings of your posts, those, those header titles on, on your posts. Those could all become text posts. So what do you do? You literally copy and paste whatever it is and you post it as text on social media. And if you happen to use Twitter, there's a really cool trick I'm gonna tell you about right now. Post your text over on Twitter and then go to your Twitter feed. Take a screenshot of your post and when you post it on some place like Instagram or here on Facebook, you'll see a little picture of you in the top left corner with whatever you said. It's pretty cool. It establishes credibility quickly. People can glance at it and they can start to get to know, like, and trust you in kind of the blink of an eye, right? We wanna be able to get people to stop their scroll when they're on social. And if we can take these long pieces of content and distill them down into little pieces, I mean, you could have 10, 20, 30 per each blog post. And if you just did that, you can 30X the amount of times people can see your stuff, which is super, 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 important and really handy for your business. All right, are you ready for tip number two? Also super simple. So the tool that I, I talked about at the beginning that never strays far from your side is this bad boy, right? Our smartphones typically don't stray too far from us. And all of these things that I'm sharing with you today can be done from your smartphone. So if you're standing in line at the grocery store and you want to do something quickly or post something or engage or, or be a presence on a social media platform, you can literally do it when you're in line at the grocery store waiting to get checked out, right? So super easy, super fast. So number two is actually an app. You can access it from your phone. You can also access it from a web browser and it's a free tool called Canva. So now that you have extracted five or 10 or 20 tips or takeaways or quotes from your blog post, you can literally go to Canva and create graphic images, right? The old saying, a picture tells a thousand words or tells a thousand stories is very much true. And people can see beautiful images and they're overlaid with beautiful text from your blog post. It is the same exact text that you already shared as text form, but now it has a beautiful image, right? And if you have images in your blog posts, you definitely can just upload those images directly into Canva, copy the title of your blog post, some takeaways, the step-by-steps, and have your beautiful images behind your amazing text, that's the next best thing. We're elevating what you already have. Because remember, I'm a big fan in starting with what you already have and making it super simple. And so again, if you have, let's say, five quotes or five tips from tip number one, taking your text out exactly verbatim and text posting it as a text post, there's five pieces of content. What if you took those five and pulled images from your blog post directly or use images that are offered in Canva and you created five more? Now you have your blog post, you have your five text posts, and you have your five image posts. It's 11 pieces of content in about five minutes. How is that for cool? And if you are interested, Canva, like I said, is available as an app on your phone. So again, when you're waiting somewhere, when you're waiting at the school pickup, if that happens in the fall, and you have these moments of downtime, these pockets of time, I like to call them, you can definitely use that time to create these pieces of content. And Lucy and Susan and Krista, you all have images already on your blog posts. So take those beautiful images, just upload them directly into Canva, pop some text over the top and share those. And the thing about these things that we can share, these little pieces of micro content, they can be shared over and over and over again because the lifespan of a social media post is pretty darn quick. So if you posted something this week and you post the exact same thing next week, chances are, most people won't even notice because 
if only one or two percent of people are seeing any posts that we put up daily, they may not have seen it in the first place. So even though it feels like we're putting things out again and again and again, and we feel repetitive, we just need to put that aside because the reality is most people are not seeing our content. So we have to put that content, drip those little pieces, those little nuggets out frequently so people really have a chance to get to consume our content in a way that makes sense for them. I know I am a very visual learner and I love learning also by the next couple of tips I'm going to give you as well. So even though I love wordsmithing, I love writing, the reality is because not everyone learns best in that manner, I'm really, really aware of the different ways that I can create content now that more people can enjoy. And that's really the name of the game when it comes to repurposing your blog or any type of content you have. It's really about how can you make it easier for anyone who needs to hear your message. They need to hear from you. They wanna hear your words of wisdom. How can you make it easy for them to see your stuff? And repurposing is definitely the key to making that happen. So that brings us to tip number three. Are you ready for it? You're going to pull out your smartphone and you're gonna click on your voice memos app and you're literally going to record an audio. It can be an excerpt from your blog post. It can be some takeaways, whatever you want. It's all about presenting a story and presenting something that people can enjoy in different ways again. So record your voice. And I know in the beginning, it's gonna feel weird. It's gonna feel crazy to listen back to your voice because you're not going to want to listen to yourself, right? I know getting over that little hurdle sometimes takes a little bit of time. I know when I first started podcasting and I had to go back and edit my podcast in the beginning, I really didn't like the sound of my voice. However, I needed to get over myself because the people who are out there waiting need to hear that message from you, right? So get over the fact that it's you're having to talk but really thinking about terms of, in terms of serving. How can you serve your audience? And if they enjoy content in audio form, and if you're denying them that privilege, then that's on us. We need to make sure we make it easy for them to consume our content, right? So audio snippets. You can then upload them natively to all the different platforms and share your message like that. And because I love you guys, and I know that you're spending time with me today. I want to give you a bonus tip, number four. And this, of all of them, if you were to do one of them today, here's what I recommend. Can you guess what it is? Probably some of you who are here live can guess what I'm going to say. Tip number four is create a video. Now, video can take many different forms. It can be done like this, face to camera live. You can also do face to camera pre-recorded and upload those here on Facebook, create a watch party, create a premiere, and then show up in the comments, right? But you don't have to read your whole blog post again. It's about creating some micro content, some little bite-sized chunk, a minute, two minutes, maybe up to 10 minutes if you want to do like a whole section of your blog. But people like short and sweet. And I know as I'm here live, my podcast episodes lately have been running around 15, 20 minutes. And for me, that seems like a good amount of time to get in, get out, give you some action steps and help you on your way to create this repurposed content because it can be fast, it can be really efficient and it can be super, super easy. So video, you can also do something where you share your screen and you just are talking over the top of it. Now there's software you can use to do that, of course. You can use something like Zoom, where you can just hide your face or put your face in the corner and just do a screen share. There are some things like Loom, L-O-O-M, where you can do quick screen capture videos and you can put a still picture of yourself in the corner or you can take it away entirely, but it's still video. 
people stop their scroll for a video. They like to engage, especially now when we are social distancing, and it's not always possible for us to be face to face with our clients or the people that we love to hang out with. So the next best thing is via video because you can really quickly build connection and rapport and because people have a visual of you and they get a sense of the little nuances and the, the way that you show up, that goes a really long way in helping them to get to know, like, and trust you. And you know, the whole reason you create blog posts is for people to come to you to seek out information for your services or your products or your education-based offerings, whatever they are. The reason we create content is to support the things we love to do. Now, I show up here every week on Thursdays live. I then automate it to where this video becomes an audio for my podcast. And my podcast goes live on Saturday, right? So I'm dripping my content out. It's the same content, but I'm repurposing it in different ways. And then of course, by tomorrow, this particular video will be together with a whole huge blog post that has been transcribed and written out with headers and images and all the works. So even just from this one video, I'm at least getting three pieces of content. And of course, my team and I take it a little further. We actually chunk it up into even smaller pieces. So we literally get dozens and dozens and dozens of pieces of content from one single thing. So my friends, I want you to think about content in the terms of how can it be repurposed? When you sit down to write your podcast, or so your, your blog post the next time, I want you to think about, okay, I'm gonna write a blog post, but how else can I share with people in little bite-sized chunks what it is that I'm talking about in my blog post? And if you use these four tips that I shared today, if you use text posts, text posts with, with on a graphic, audio, and then video, those things alone. If you were just to do those things today for one blog post, your favorite blog post, Krista, you could take your beautiful images and all the directions for how to create your beautiful paper flowers. If you were to do that, you could probably get that done in the next 15, 20 minutes and have ways or leave little breadcrumbs for people to find and discover that next step with you. So now I wanna hear from you. What questions do you have about turning your blog post into other forms of content? And that process, my friends, is called repurposing. Just like you could repurpose an old piece of furniture or something in your closet, you can do the same thing with your content. And in fact, the whole 90s slogan, reduce, reuse, recycle, is something I always think about when it comes to repurposing blog posts or podcast episodes or videos. How can I reduce the amount of work I need to do in creating this content in the first place? I'm gonna reduce that. Reuse, how can I reuse my content? And that's really where this idea of repurposing comes into play, right? How can we reuse it? We don't always have to reuse the entire big long form content. We can reuse it by offering little bite-sized nuggets and sharing those out and sprinkling those out across the interwebs. And then we're gonna recycle. We're gonna make sure that whatever we have repurposed gets recycled because again, not everyone is seeing our posts when we post them. So we just need to always be putting out those breadcrumbs so they can follow the trail and we can lead them on a beautiful journey that we've created for them. So in the, in the hopes that they will come into our, our world and either become you know someone that we connect with or someone who might become a client, right? It's all about those connections. And as my, my mentor would say, Renee Rebar, you know, it's about creating the three C's, connect, collaborate, or client, right? We're always seeking out those three things and our content does those things for us. And in fact, we need to get our content to work harder for us, which is why the whole idea of repurposing is so important in the first place. And Krista says, you're already thinking on it, yes. Yes, and Krista, even, even if you're new, if you just take these ideas that I shared today and even just implemented one of them, 
Could you commit to doing one of those things today and sharing it out? Because that's all it takes. One little step in front of the other. And if you can do this in the beginning of your content creation journey and you're thinking about all the things you can create on the back end, that's gonna serve you in a really big way because you can really start to build out this system and this process that every week you go through the same thing to create all of these pieces of content, all these warm cookies, as Renee would say, right? Sprinkling them out along the way so people can come on this journey with us. So my friends, if you like this content, I would love for you to come and hang out in my brand new community here on Facebook called Creators Landing. Now in Creators Landing, it is a place where we get to be creative because creation comes in all forms. I love to create marketing content, but I also love to create other kinds of creative content. So it's a place where creatives can come hang out, we can be ourselves, and it's a place where we can cultivate and encourage and empower our kids to start becoming creators as well so that they can cultivate and craft a life of their choosing rather than having to follow the herd and go out there and get a job and do the nine to five grind. So I invite you to come join me. I will let you know below this video where you can do that. I cannot wait to connect with you further in there. If you have questions, please feel free to drop them below. I will come back and answer all these questions. Until then though, I want you to take one action step today. Commit to doing one of these tips that I gave you and then I want you to post it on social and tag me. I cannot wait to see what you have created. Until next time my friends, cheers!